Hello guys, I'm your host William and today we're going to talk about the movie Wrath of a Man. The beginning of Wrath of Man. We see an armored truck that has just left a place where money is kept and is on its way to the bank. But before it got where it was going, a group of heavily armed men dressed as construction workers stole from the armored truck. During the robbery, two guards and a civilian bystander are killed. Five months after the robbery, we see Patrick Hill applying for a job as a guard at Forico Security, a security company that also delivers cash to banks and other places. In his interview, Terry, who will soon be his boss, praises Hill's references and warns him about the fatal robbery. Hill was then shown to Bullet, a senior guard and company trainer who would be in charge of Hill's training and tests. Bullet said that Hill had to get a fitness score of at least 70%, thrive, shoot, and other things to get hired by the company. He had to go through these tests, and he passed them well enough that he was accepted as a guard at Fort Co. Security on his first day. Hill was put in charge of Bullet and an older guard named Dave. Dave told Hill about the robbery from five months ago while they were driving to a pickup. He also told Hill that he was supposed to be driving the car at the time, but Dave didn't come to work because he was sick. Due to how violent the robberies had been lately, Dave told Hill not to act hastily or act like a rookie. Hill didn't say much in response to Dave's words and just kept an eye on the situation as they drove to their destination. He won't get hurt on his first day of work at Ford Deco Security. Hill and the others went back to Fort Toco Security after giving the money to where it was supposed to go. Hill looked at the ID cards of the people who worked at Fort Toco Security with a questioning eye after he put the time sheet in and went home. It seems like the man was at Fort Co. Security for a reason other than to work and make money after being picked up. Bullet is taken hostage by gunmen when Hill and Dave are waiting for a man at. The thieves then get in touch with Dave and Hill through a walkie-talkie and tell them that if they want to be saved, they need to pay a ransom of $2 million that was in the truck. Bullet, Dave got scared right away and tried to remember what to do in such a dangerous situation. After that, he will shoot the robbers with a very high level of accuracy right away. The man then chased one of the robbers who tried to get away and forced him to say who was really in charge of the robbery since he wouldn't say anything. Hill killed himself in the same way that Hill did something brave, which shocked Dave and they didn't know that Hill could stop the robbery on his own and free the hostages. After what happened, Hill was questioned by two FBI agents. They asked him why his real scores were so different from his practice scores. Hill then thought that it was because he was in a dangerous situation, which made him feel more alert and helped him shoot accurately. The FBI agents then asked Hill to look at security footage from the robbery they had already talked about to see if he thought the two crimes were related. Hill seems to be paying close attention to the security footage when one of the robbers shoots and kills a civilian. But after that, he said that there is no link. When they found out that Patrick Hillies was Hill, someone the FBI had been looking for for 25 years, the FBI agents who just talked to Hill called their boss, FBI agent King, right away. But King tells his workers to keep their attention on the robbery and not bother Patrick. After three months, Hill and Bullet are still in the truck, but this time they are alone. The thieves sprayed black paint on the car's windshield to make it hard for the guard to see, and then they shot Hill with tear gas, making him get out of the car. But as soon as the thieves see see Hill, they run away without putting up any fight. Hill told Terry about what happened, but Terry didn't believe him at all and thought Hill was a psychopath. Not only Terry remembered what they saw when Hill fought the robber, but so did Dave and Bullet. Bullet then said that the robbers in the attempted robbery he had just been through with Hill looked scared and ran away quickly, as if they knew Patrick Hill's real name from the day of the robbery five months before. Hill is out with his son Jai when he gets a call from work asking him to help with the recon of an armored truck route. Hill doesn't want to do it, but he does it anyway. Hill turned out to be a member of the Mafia who often helped steal money from armored vehicles carrying a lot of money. One of Hill's co-workers wasn't able to direct the armored truck for some reason, so Hill had to do it himself even though he was going to watch a football game with his son that day. Then, one of the thieves told DJI to get out of his car and lie down on the ground. He saw one of the robbers shoot and kill his son with a gun. Hill was running toward Doji. The man was shot multiple times, but he survived. Hill saw the face of the person who shot and killed his son before he passed out. The person had a scar on his face. Hill wakes up from a coma in the hospital three weeks later and is devastated by the death of his son. Hill's wife blames him for their son's death and leaves him after the robbery that killed Hill's son. Then, he talked to FBI Agent King and asked him for information. Agent King had a list of possible suspects that the FBI was also looking into, but he didn't know who had killed Hill's during the robbery. Agent King tells Hill that he can do anything to get revenge for his son's death, but he can't just turn a blind eye, because it turns out that Long Hill is actually a crime lord named Mason Hargraves. Agent gave King Hill a list of names of the people who killed his son. 
King Hill then told all of his men to find those people. Hillsman killed almost everyone on the list of FBI agent King, including the Gacy brothers, who ran a business that made and sold pornographic movies. Even though the Gacy brothers had nothing to do with the robbery that killed their son Hills, he still killed them and told his men to set the underage girls who were in the hot film free and give them money to start a new, better life. Not finding out anything about the theft, Hill later told his helper that he was going to fly back to London to clear his head. But what he really wanted to do was make a fake identity under the name Patrick Hill and sneak into Ford Toko security on his own. He will think that a security guard at Fort Toko was involved in the robbery that killed his son. So, Hill went undercover and joined the security team at Forico to find out more about the robber, because none of Hill's men knew what he was going to do. That's why his men were so surprised to see Hill, who now works as a guard at Fort Deco Security. They had tried to rob an armored truck with black paint and tear gas. Then, they run away before their boss can catch them. Next, the scene changes to a time before the robbery. Carlos, Sam, Brad, Tom, Jan, and Jackson, who used to be their commanding officer, are all unhappy veterans who are struggling to make ends meet. Most of them were unemployed or working low-paying jobs, so Jackson and the others decided to start looting to get more money. Jackson and Tom planned the robbery in great detail while keeping up the appearance that everything was normal, except Jan, who doesn't seem to respect Jackson very much. The first thing they did was try to rob a rich man who only made a few hundred thousand dollars and was upset about being forced into financial trouble. They decide to talk to a friend who works at a company that makes armored trucks to find out what they could do to make a more profitable armored truck robbery. When they do the for deco heist, it turns out that Jan is the one who kills the guards and doji against the wishes of the others. In the present, Jackson and Tom get back together for a final heist that is much bigger and more dangerous. Trying to steal more than $150 million from the Forico Security Depot over the Black Friday shopping weekend. While Jackson and the others are getting ready for their biggest heist, Bullet tells Hill that he is an insider for the robbers and tells Hill to work with him because the robbers will soon be back. When Hell heard this, he agreed right away because he had waited so long to get back at the person who killed his son. After telling Jackson and his team that Hill would be part of the robbery, Bullet stopped the truck. Soon after, four thieves dressed in full body armor get into the truck and hide there so they can get into the 40 Code Depot. Jackson and Tom follow them in a black SUV. As soon as the truck got to the depot, the thieves ran in and took Hill as a hostage, warning everyone with guns not to move too quickly. The thieves then demand that the gate be opened or they will kill someone with a gun. If they don't, Bullet tells his friends to do what the robbers say. But a worker sets off the alarm, and other guards start shooting at the robbers, which leads to a deadly shootout. After killing the guards and using explosives to get through the inner gates, the thieves let Jackson and Tom in and started taking the money in the middle of the robbery. Then, he strangled Carlos and freed Terry and Dave, who the robber had taken hostage. When he found out that Carlos wasn't the person he was looking for, he killed Sam and Tom. Then, he will put a cell phone in one of the money-filled bags so that he can find the thieves. If they were able to get away later, Jackson would shoot him in the neck while Dave killed Brad. On the other hand, the bullet would reveal his true identity and kill his friends. Hill is also hit by that bullet, which hurts him very badly and then kills Dave. Bullet, Jackson, and Jan got out of the depot and away from the police by going into a garage that led to a tunnel underground. Jan is going to betray Jackson, so a badly hurt Jackson pulls out a gun and plans to shoot Jan. But Jan knew what Jackson was going to do, so he killed him right away by slitting his throat. When Jan and Bullet got to the end of the tunnel, Bullet pulled out a gun to kill Jan, but Jan killed him. <laughs> after that, Jan got all the money before the police could figure out what had happened. Not long after that, Jan, who is now rich and living in his apartment, found a cell phone that was ringing in one of the bags of money. Hill had put the phone there on purpose to find out where Jan was. Unexpectedly, Hill was already at Jan's apartment and had been waiting for a long time to meet Jan. Hill's killer then shows Jan 601's autopsy report and explains how DCI died based on what the report says. He won't say much, but he'll kill Jan right away by shooting him in the same spot where Jan shot Doji. In the end, he will leave the money behind and tell Agent King that it's over before getting in his car. And the story end here. What do you think about this story? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like the video, subscribe and activating bell for notification until the next video. Thank you so much for watching.